This video is on how to create a Google site on an iPad. Google Sites are a wonderful, fantastic resource for students to create portfolios or websites to showcase the work on a project. So to begin using an iPad, open up Safari and then navigate to sites.google.com. It will ask you to sign in, so please sign in with, if you're doing this for school, with your district username and password. Once you are in, you're taken to the main screen here. Your screen may look a little different than mine as I have some websites already going. What you will do is you will then click the red create button to create your website. You're going to choose a blank template and then name your site. You can name your site anything that you want that goes along with your project or your name, but try to keep it short and simple for typing purposes. After you have a name, you are then going to select a theme. Your themes will load here, and you're going to take a look at the different variety of themes that you can use. Now, word of advice. Trying to go back and change a theme later in your web page creation process is going to be a little difficult on an iPad. So, because iPads are our main device that we will be creating and editing web pages on, you will need to pick a theme and live with it. Try to live with it as best you can. Now, if it's a theme that you absolutely hate, then we can talk about how to try to go back and change that theme. But again, it can be very difficult on an iPad. So you're going to pick a theme, and then you're going to cl click the Create button. And it may take a moment or two for your web page to load. Once your web page has loaded, it's going to take you to a home page. may introduce you to the web page, introduce you to the the creator of the web page or introduce you to the topic maybe a thesis statement of sorts so to begin editing your home page simply click on the pencil and you'll see that the editor tool will come up it looks very familiar if you're familiar with Google Docs it is very much like a Google Doc now the one thing I will have to tell you about is Google Sites does not save automatically like Google Docs. So you will have to click the blue save button in the upper right hand corner every time you want to save your changes. If not, and you log out or you X out of the tab, everything you have done is gone. So using the editor tool, you'll see under the word home, we have insert, format, table, layout, and help. So insert is where you will go to insert images, links, text boxes, and even things from your Google Drive. More about that in a second. Formatting, your formatting tool is here so you can add your heading sizes, you can align to left, right, center, all that good stuff is right there. Table, you can insert a table or edit a table. And then you have layout. So layout, a lot of people like to play with the layout buttons. So you can kind of choose the layout of your home page the way you want it. Whether you want columns, no columns, two, three, sidebar, all that kind of stuff you can create and play with there. Now, let's go back to insert. So as you see, when you go to edit your home page or any page that you create on your web page, You'll notice that when you go into edit mode, you can then tap inside of a text box and you can begin typing. You can also go up to insert and insert an image. But I will tell you from experience that this kind of editing on an iPad can be frustrating at times. Um, sometimes images don't always load or come in in the correct format that you want it to come into. Sometimes your text can get look a little wonky as well. So my recommendation is that before you even start creating this web page, that you line out your pages in a Google Doc or Google Slide. So create your home page, 
in a Google Doc, you add your information, you add your headings, your fonts, your colors, your images, and then add it to your web page. Same thing for your other pages. When you want to add an information page or a works cited page, again, create it in a Google Doc first and then bring it over to your web page. So, for example, I'm going to delete out my writing here. I want to insert, I've already created my home page, it's in a Google Doc. I'm going to go to Insert, Drive, and then Document. Now it's very important when creating your Google Docs or your web pages for your in Google Docs that you know what you name them. Very important. So as you can see here, I have one named homepage. That is the information I want on my homepage. So I'm going to click it and then hit select. All right, you can leave the height and width and everything alone. It's going to take up most of your page if you do it this way. Click save. And then as you see here, my Google Doc is there, but it doesn't look exactly right. Um, you can center it. You can adjustify it left or right, all that good stuff there. But you're not going to see your Google Doc until you hit save. So now that I go up here to the top and hit save, you now see my Google Doc, which will be the information that I want on my home screen. So again, think of your home pages as the cover of a book or those first couple pages of the book telling you what your book is about and why you want to read the book, why you want to check out this web page. So I have a welcome, what genetic modified organisms are, I have an image here, and then I have a statement below. So depending on what your teacher wants, it depends on what information you need in your home page. So now that I have my home page done, I need to create my second page, my information page. So using the toolbar at the top, you'll see next to the pencil, there's a little page icon with a plus. So you're going to click on that to create your page. Name your page. Now for demonstration purposes, I am just going to call it page two. But on yours, it could actually have another name. It's up to you. Once you have that set up, you typed in, you can click create, the big red create button. All right, now that my page two is created, you can see that it looks exactly like the home page. It works exactly like the last page that you created. So I'm gonna hit my edit tool. I'm gonna go to insert, drive, and then document because I've created everything in Google Docs. All right. Now that I have my second page created, my information page, I am going to go back to Insert, From Drive, Document, because it is a Google Doc, and then I can see it here, GMO page 2. If you do not see it right away, you can use the search function to find it based on its title. So again, I hit select, I leave all this box the same, I click save, minimize my keyboard. Again, I can justify it center, right, or left, and then click save. And now I have my page two. You will repeat the process again for your other information pages and a works cited page because it's always important to know where you're getting your information from. Once your web page is done and it looks fantastic, then you will click the share button to share the web link with your teacher. So click your share button to share if this is a partner activity. You can work on a web page together with a partner, but you will not see the live changes, or you'll not see. If you are working with a partner on your web page, click on the share button. 
On the share button where you can see invite people, you can add the email address of the person you want to collaborate with. Now one important thing with sharing, unlike Google Docs where you can see the live changes as they are happening, you do not see it in Google Sites. So you may be editing one page, your partner may be editing another page, and it's not until you both click save that you see what those changes are. So now we're going to talk about how to move your pages around on your navigation bar. So as you can see here on my navigation bar, I have my home page, page two, page three, and works cited page. They are all on what you call the same level. But if I want to move my pages around, what I need to do is I need to be on the page that I want to move. So for example, if page two is the page that I need to move, I'm going to make sure that I'm on page two, then click on the gear. From here, then I'm going to say I want my page two under my home page. So I tap on home and then I click move. And now you'll see that page two is under my home page. I can do the same thing for page three. Click on move page. And now I can say move it under your under my home page. And now you can see here that I have my home page, then my information pages would be under my home page, and then my works cited page can kind of be out there on the same level as my home page. So it's up to you how you want to change the navigation of your website, but that is how you can do it. By clicking the gear, being on the page that you want to move, click the gear, and then say move page. If you don't like the way it is, you can always move it. Now that you are finished with your web page, you will need to share it with your teacher. So to do that, make sure that your web page is saved and that everything looks as good as it needs to be. And then you will click on the share button in the upper right hand corner. This will open the share settings. Now what you will want to do is you want to make sure that anyone at Lexington County School District 1 who has the link can view it. So if you're looking at my screen, my screen actually says anyone in Lexington County School District 1 can edit. I don't want that. So what you need to do is you need to click on the change button. So when you click on the change button, you will have three options. Anyone at Lexington School District 1 can find and access my website. Anyone at Lexington County School District 1 can with the link can access my website or off. The one that you want to choose is the one in the middle. Anyone at Lexington School District 1 with the link. Then where it says access, anyone within Lexington County School District 1, mine says can edit. You want to make sure that it says can view. So you can click on those blue words and change it to can view. So again, when sharing your website, you want to make sure that it is for anyone at Lexington School District 1 with the link and under the access, it is anyone can view, can view. We don't want anybody editing your website without your permission. Once you have that set, you will copy the link and paste it in to Google Classroom or wherever your teacher would like for you to post the web page link. Now make sure that your teacher tests the website link to see that she or he can see your web page. If he or she cannot see your web page, then you will need to go in and double check your share settings.